Hotel Transylvania 3, colon, Monster Vacation, which fits neatly into the category of children's film in which I would never actively recommend this to an adult, but I think if you have a child that wants to see it, you're going to be okay. I have two. Yeah, I think you'll have a good time together if they want to go see it. Um, It's a nice, harmless film, which is in a landscape in which I feel like I'm often surprised by how cynical and mean-spirited family films can often be, Mm -hmm. which is what I didn't like about Peter Rabbit, which is what made show dogs so just upsetting to watch. And I think this is, you know, this whole franchise has been nice. It's about all about tolerance. The first film was about Dracula accepting that his daughter Mavis was in love with a human. The second film was about his anxiety over whether his grandson was going to have vampire powers. And then the third one starts with Professor Abraham Van Helsing in his centuries-long crusade to obliterate Dracula and his friends. Flash forward to now, and his main concern, Dracula's main concern, is a lack of romance in his life because supposedly monsters can only zing or find true love once. And it's been many years since the passing of Mavis's mother. And we have a clip of him trying to dip into the dating pool. What can I help you with, Lord of Darkness? I'm looking for a date. The date is Friday, July 13th. No, no, I want to meet someone. Understood. You want to eat dim sum. Don't you get it? I want to go on a date. I'm lonely. I understand. You want baloney. Uh, too many eyes. Too few eyes. Not into tentacles. Dad? <laughs> oh, maybe. You're stressed out from working too hard. You need a vacation from running everyone else's vacation. And I know just how to fix it. A cruise? Ooh. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, they go on a cruise. Not the same cruise that the good doctors are on right now, a monster <laughs> cruise. And it's there that he meets the captain of the ship, Erica, who he immediately zings with. Except there is a dark secret that may complicate matters somewhat. And I will say this film does have a lot of predictable jokes. I feel like I've seen the series misunderstanding things people are saying jokes a lot still makes me laugh (laughs) (laughs) i guess so yeah and uh, there's also a sequence with garlic based flatulence which went on for a very long time (laughs) maybe it's just you you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but i will say i think what separates this franchise slightly from other sort of similar animated movies is the monster tag because it means they can get quite inventive there's lots of mayhem here and i think it's the side characters that i really found funny there's the gremlins on gremlin air who are all the stewards are just pouring hot coffee on everyone and there's a nice reference to the twilight zone there and there's the fish servers voiced by chris parnell whose mouths are on the top of their heads there's the chupacabra who uh, orders a goat in a cocktail glass and i think the ability to move to environments outside of the hotel really benefits this film. And there is a very starry cast. You have Adam Sandler back as Dracula doing his whole blah, blah, blah thing, which I feel like either you're into or you're not into. I think everyone knows already how they feel about Adam Sandler. But there's also Selena Gomez, Andy Samberg, Steve Buscemi, Keegan-Michael Key, Molly Shannon, Catherine Hahn, Mel Brooks, But I will say for the main characters, I feel like they're not quite developed enough to make the most of that set of voice actors. And there are three things about this film which I feel like kids will not be bothered by, but I feel like I, as an adult, was a little bit bothered by. The first one is this trope that I've noticed in animated movies that in the sequels when they run out of ideas, they just bring in a girlfriend which I remember they did for the Ice Age franchise. Mm -hmm. And I can see that they're about to do it for the How to Train Your Dragon franchise. They've just brought in a girl dragon because they just don't know what to do. And I just feel like it's just not really an interesting thing to do when with animated movies, you could just do anything the imagination could possibly Mm -hmm. conceive. I think the second thing is the animation style because this is directed by Gendy Tartakovsky, who he did the first two as well. Um, And he also did a show that I used to watch on Cartoon Network called Dexter's Lab, which has this style of animation that is so representative of 1990s style Cartoon Network animation, which is very jerky, 
ultra hyper stylized people express emotions through their whole bodies and it's almost like a jazz like freestyle sort of way to move your body it's very strange and it's perfectly great for a half hour tv show i think after an hour of this film i was starting to wear down a little bit okay. i think especially because i saw it at 10 a.m and this leads me to my other point is that there's a lot of edm music in this oh, really? i don't know why there's so much edm music tiesto is very heavily featured on the soundtrack how bizarre EDM, the power of EDM music is literally a crucial narrative plot point in the film. I won't give away how or when. Is this the theme tune of a cruise? EDM I cruise? Yeah, I don't know if it's just because it's a shortcut to having something loud and distracting for children. But um, I think for me, tired adult who'd only had one coffee, by the end <laughs> I was like, okay, we can stop now. <laughs> so Stop with the EDM music! I don't know. So I, I, there are things that I found vaguely irritating about it, but I think overall... You, you can do a lot worse than this. So cool. if you have kids that they want to see it, they do. you'll be totally fine.